and just um every time this happens i honestly i just i just break down and i just go into prayer to the lord all over again like it just makes me angry with him because i'm like you are the one who's determining how far i can go when i leave i need guidance to know what next move to make like i don't have any resources like that so i don't know I hate people like this. I hate wicked people. It's just and I do think um I do think that the state that some people are in when they're bound to sin or they're just spiritually dead, I really do think they don't have any real concept of how their actions or how their treatment makes you feel, but with her, with that entity that is not a mother by any means. She knows exactly what she's doing and she does it intentionally. And I've just had the father, he just, he's given me a lot of different words about her and how to deal with her. But it, it just still makes you sick just to deal with it anyway. It's very hard for me not to go into deep intercession for judgment to be released upon these people. I'm really trying to stop praying like that. Um, but I'm glad that it's coming because God is not mocked and however you treat people is going to be measured back to you. I want absolutely nothing to do with these people when I leave this place. And it's just a reaffirmation that Father sometimes has to give us as saints to remind you these people are not your family. It doesn't matter how nice they are to you. Sometimes that's, that's completely fraudulent. It could just be generational spirits through them, you know, treating you like that so that you can open up yourself back up, reinstate those covenants. But... It doesn't matter how much y'all are on good terms. Scripture does encourage you to pursue peace with all men. As much as lieth in you, pursue peace with everybody. So you don't want an atmosphere of strife. But in some cases, it really does require for you to just gray rock everybody. It really does have to get to a point. And there's a, there's a guy, I freaking love him and his channel. <laughs> He's not saved and he has a channel on narcissism, but he's his channel is a lot more different than your typical like, you know, narcissistic channels and talking about it. He's just a lot more personable and he always hits the nail on the head with everything that he says. And I'm going to link his video in the description box. Y'all need to watch him if you're dealing with this, but um it, it it's not going to change anything. Um it's just I really do wish that I was someone who was not weak emotionally like that because I feel like there's Christians who are a little bit more spiritually stronger where it, things like that may not affect them. And that's not the case for me, unfortunately. There's nothing I can do about that. So I, I literally have to just sit here and uh, just take this kind of abuse from these people. And um, I'm just so tired, like... It's, it's a level of toxicity where, like, I personally don't value people that are just trash to me. I mean, you can just identify who's worthy and who's valuable of salvation and, you know, the Lord, you know, obviously because they open themselves up to him. But, like, when you just see somebody just, just for who they are, they're just wicked. Like, that's your family. And thank God that he delivered you from those curses and that bloodline because that's what you would have been looking like tacky toxic abusive trash people and that's true for a lot of us it's the truth it's not being ugly you are what you are unless you receive christ and you let him manifest his life through you that's what you are you're trash and i'm just i'm just tired of like being mistreated by these people and just having these ugly things said to me I'm so sick of it. It's like, at what point does the Lord finally come through and just, just <sighs> take care of all of this stuff? Like, you cannot let people keep doing stuff like this. <sighs> and 
and I mean saying it to maliciously and intentionally insult and to hurt you as a person. Nobody deserves to be talked to like that. <sighs> These people were to die today and go to hell, I would not care at all because you deserve to be there. You are a horrible person. Like, I, I just want to get away from you. I don't care what God does with you after this. I don't care if he throws you in the river, throws you in the trash, or throws you into Gehenna. I just don't want anything to do with you. And I have to be here subject to this kind of treatment. And it just affects you on a whole nother level when you know that you're actually a genuine person. I'm a very loving and caring person. If these people were to repent today, I would be the best niece. I would be the best granddaughter. I would be the best all whatever my role is in your life. Because that's the kind of heart that I have. I'm just tired of being taken advantage of by these disgusting trash people. <sighs> like, I'm sick of it. Like, I don't... <sighs> oh, my God. Like, sometimes it drives me to want to drink. I'm being completely... I mean, that doesn't do anything. That's definitely not satisfying by any means i don't want to do that i don't have any pleasure in that as a saint but it just it's just some type of escape like just to get away from these disgusting people the fact that i even have to wake up and look at you in the face every day makes me sick like it's like a vehement hatred like i don't want just the quality of person that you are i don't personally hate you but it's just i don't care about any of y'all and it's like I'm just waiting for the Lord to finally to just release me permanently. And I know that he's doing that. He's allowing that treatment so that I can see. You can know that when you leave, there's nothing to go back to. Don't bring these people into your next season with you. Don't bring them into your prosperity with you. They didn't earn that. They deserve to be right where they're at. That's your lot. So don't look back at all. You don't have a family. I'm okay with that. I prayed for new family. I prayed for Christian relatives, okay, to be adopted. <laughs> Hopefully by new spiritual parents, new spiritual siblings. I prayed for that. Hopefully maybe through my marriage. Who knows? Maybe the Lord will bless me with a, a godly husband who actually has loving Christian parents. And those could be my parents or siblings, and that can be my siblings. I still do desire a family, but this is not it. And I have no interest in trying to convert them or to make any kind of changes to that. I'm interested in getting out and being delivered out and never looking back at you again. I don't have an issue with cutting people off when God instructs me to do that. I don't care if it's nephews or whoever it is. They're connected to you. I don't want no part of you. I will pray for those kids and keep them covered. I already did so. And, you know, let the Lord be Lord in their lives. But as for me, it's disgusting and it's just, they have no fear of God to begin with. But just know that you treating somebody like this, especially somebody that he loves and he considers a special possession to him, his daughter, you're going to pay for that. Like I said, I don't care how he does. That's just fine by me. As long as you just get me out, that's all I care about. But, you know, God doesn't want you treating anybody like that, but especially not his own people who are not disrespecting you, being ugly to you saying hurtful it's, it's just disgusting treatment like it could be a lot worse but it's bad already it shouldn't be done period you shouldn't be talking to your daughter like that period like you are a mentally ill sick person and, you know sometimes you just want that lawyer to come out <laughs> like you just want that one person that god to send in the household for him to send to the household and they just call out everybody and just like rebuke everyone <laughs> I don't know if that's the Holy Spirit in me or sometimes I wish Jesus himself would just come and do it because I just get tired of seeing people be comfortable in wickedness and the way that they treat people and just the way they do things it just it just does something to me like I have no remorse for you ending up in hell because you deserve to be there I hate when people treat people like that I hate stuff like that like it makes me physically sick I hate it so much disgusting just being malicious to somebody else for no reason. <sighs> Definitely don't want to be in any relationship with any people or bring any people into your next season. A season that God is blessing you in who don't even value you as a person. They don't care about your feelings. 
They don't regard you or any parts of you in that regard. They treat you like dirt. I think I was watching Iyanla, um, one of her shows, because I love watching Iyanla, but she said something like, um, I don't get to tell people how to love me. I get to see how they love me and choose whether I want to be in that relationship or not. And I loved how she said that. I think I actually wrote it down somewhere, but that's true. You can't make somebody love you. You can't make somebody respect you. You just pay attention to how, because the way people treat you is where you stand, how they value you in their personal lives, regardless of what you feel for them. And maybe some of y'all need to hear that if you're in a relationship like that. People show you how they feel about you. If I really love somebody, I don't care if it's a friend, a boyfriend, I don't believe in that. <laughs> I'm just saying, I mean, prior to marriage, you know, it doesn't matter what it is. If I truly love somebody, it's just some things that just come naturally. Like if I really have that kind of, you know, um, that kind of emotion in my heart for somebody, you're going to go out of your way to talk to that person every day. You're going to go out of your way to see them, pick them up on dates. You know, you want to be around them. You want to treat them well because you want to display or you want to distribute certain qualities that's going to make them receive you more. So if somebody is showing you the complete opposite of that, they don't care about you. It's nothing to guess about. It's, it's nothing to pray about. It's, it's, it's pretty blatant. They don't care. Even if it's not a personal disdain for you, the fact that they have that kind of shell about their hearts, it may just be that they're a selfish person, which means they treat everybody like that. So they don't care about you or the next person. So no, that's not somebody that you want to give your pearls to. And sometimes you are the pearl. You are worthy. You are that person. You are that genuine loving person that somebody is looking to make a wife. You are that person who somebody wishes they had as a friend because they've been abused all their lives or they've had fake friends all their lives or fake girlfriends or whatever. And no, you have a right to say, no, I'm not going to be treated that way. I don't like the way you treat me or the way you speak to me. I don't want anything to do with you. My services at this point are done. Good luck with your life, <laughs> okay? Whatever I had to offer at this point, you clearly don't value it because you don't value me. You show me how you feel about me by the way that you treat me. It's not something that you have to pray about all the time. You can pray for them. You can definitely pray for them to change. But as far as you administering different parts of yourself to help them with this, that no. It doesn't work like that. And if you do that, you're a fool. Because they don't respect you. Just like this woman, after she insulted me by saying something nasty like that to me, just to be ugly. She had the nerve to ask me for money a couple days afterwards. This is how screwed up these people are in the head. And this is why even if, like I told everybody through the text when I sent it to my relatives, this is why I said even if y'all were saved, <laughs> you know, the fact that these people's concept of family is that they can treat you any kind of way, talk about you any kind of way, talk to you any kind of way, but because you're family, you're still supposed to subject yourself to them and the treatment that they give you is delusional. My definition of family is not that by any means. And for for most people, for folk for most, you know, family dynamics, that's that's what they that's what they believe. Your cousin or your uncle or up this, they don't like you <laughs> and they're gossiping about you, but yet they're still they still feel like you have an obligation to be around them. You're nothing to me. You're dead to me. You're trash to me. That's not love. I don't know who taught you love, or maybe you never you were never taught what love is. Even if you know what love is, the fact that you're not giving it to me shows me how you feel about me. That's not family. It's just very unfortunate that you have to be confined in a box with these kind of entities. And I think maybe, you know, I'm tired of it. But as far as like God's sovereignty is concerned, I think that he allows this for us because it's kind of like a low level of training on how to come out of the world in the midst of the wicked you know, it's like practice because you're already surrounded by the wicked. Your enemies are of your own household, especially with everything God's going to show you, everything that you're going to feel, discern. It's not hard to make the right conclusion, okay? And 
you have to learn how to literally separate yourself and have yourself be set apart from the wicked before he even takes you to new levels where you're going to have to do it there too. Basically. So I think that maybe that's what he's doing behind it. Um, and sometimes it could just be still something in us. There could still be some agreement with the things of the world or the people of the world. And he has to use those same vessels that are in the world to beat you and to hurt you just to show you you shouldn't want any parts of these people or this kingdom. Look at how they treat people. So sometimes it could just be something that's still in you that he wants to get out of you. Or maybe there's still that weak part of you that's uh, there's a lot of I've seen a lot of Christians like that. And it makes me sick personally. They have no backbone at all when it comes to separating from ungodly people in their family as Christians. Like they're so weak about it. Oh, that's my mom. Well, you know, I don't want to be me. It's like, okay, well, if you don't want to do it yourself, then God's going to have to take it to the next level and basically show these people's hearts to you. Let them treat you like crap and keep running over you so you can get the point. Yeah, they don't care about you in a natural sense, but spiritually, they're a part of the beast's body. You should have nothing to do with them. They're not of Christ. So I think there's several reasons why he's allowing it. And I think, honestly, that needed to be done for me. Because um, I wasn't really opening myself up to her, like, spiritually. It wasn't anything like that. It was just, um, you know, with the father, he could probably just see that just as defiling anyway. Agreement is agreement. Um, and it's not saying you have to be disrespectful or be ugly to them. You just, uh, you make it known that uh, you are distancing yourself. I, I choose to do it in a formal way. I'm going to let you know why I'm separating from you. Like, I mean... Sometimes it may not always call for that, but I think it's better that way so that they don't have an excuse. At least if you don't speak to them, now they know why you're not speaking to them. I made it clear why I'm not speaking to you. So, um, yeah, agreement is agreement. He may just see it as a, just as an open door. You just, even if you have a crack open, um, there's no reason for a crack. <laughs> you know, I don't want you in fellowship with them, period. So there's no reason to even be, you know, lenient in any way. Um, for friendship or possible, you know, because sometimes just because your family's family don't mean that you're friends. So friendship with family members, you know, is it's not necessary. And I just think about how um the disciples they were asking Jesus, you know, let me go bury my father first before I follow you. And he said, let the dead bury their dead. Like he didn't even give them an inch to consider going backwards, you know. And that was in regards to relatives. And it's like no. There's no need. You know, sometimes God can already see down the line, like, they're never going to receive me. You're wasting your time. She may not be a mean sister. She may, some of you, it could be a close sister. It could be a very close relative, cousin. It could be somebody who's nice. And there's nothing bad about them in that regard. But uh, if you're following Christ and you want to go all the way, leave these people where they are. Because whether it's a year from now or 10 years from now, they're going, they're already dead in their sins and they're going to die and go to hell anyway. That's how he sees it. They're never going to receive me. If they ever are, I'm sure he will reveal that to you and, you know, allow you a certain measure of grace with them. But if they've already rejected him, they don't want anything to do with God, but they, they still think they're going to be attached to you and be friend. No, 